Today, we're unpacking an unconventional action of insulin and its role in treating hyperkalemia, a condition characterized by high potassium levels in the blood. So, let's dive right into how this hormone, primarily known for diabetes management, also helps regulate our potassium levels. Let's start with how it works. Insulin, in this context, acts like a middleman between our blood and our cells. It helps potassium move from the blood into our cells. How does it do this? It's all thanks to the enhancement of the activity of the sodium-potassium pump in our skeletal muscles, which moves potassium intracellularly. Now let's talk about how we administer insulin in cases of hyperkalemia. The typical dose is 10 units of regular insulin, given intravenously. But there's a catch. Insulin alone can lead to a drop in blood glucose levels, or hypoglycemia. So to avoid this, we pair it with 25 grams of glucose or dextrose. It's like the buddy system. They work better together than alone. Moving on to the pharmacology specifics, the onset time of insulin is quite brisk. In about 10 to 20 minutes, it starts working its magic, facilitating the transit of potassium into the cells. This action lasts for around 4 to 6 hours, providing ample time for the body to adjust its potassium levels. But, as with all medical interventions, it's crucial to be aware of potential adverse effects. The major risk, as I mentioned earlier, is hypoglycemia. This risk is especially pertinent if glucose isn't administered along with insulin or in patients who have renal disease. The kidneys play an important role in clearing insulin from the body, so any impairment can lead to an increased risk of hypoglycemia. So, there you have it, a quick look at the role of insulin in managing hyperkalemia. It's a prime example of how versatile our medical tools can be, with insulin stepping up from its traditional role in diabetes management to help tackle high potassium levels.